In the place of prayer, you receive revelation. And when that revelation now comes, you begin to do according to the precept that was shown you. That's what Jesus said. The miracles that you see me get is because I do what I see my father do. So in the place of prayer, he is receiving revelation for the work. He writes it down and he comes and do what God shows him to do. Faith without work is dead. Glory does not just happen. You prepare for glory. So prepare me a habitation. When God anoints you, the anointing will lead you to preparation. Because without preparation, there will be no glorification. God has commissioned Apostle Claude Azangisa to spread the fire in presence of the Holy Spirit in the heart of every young person, making Christ the ultimate personality in their life. Get set for a word that will set your heart on fire for God and grant you dominion over the affairs of life. Now, Apostle Claude Azangisa. Quiet, thank you for that song. You know, each time I hear that word, Ah, God is champion. I love that word, champion. It means he's a winner. He can't lose. He can't fail. Oh, say, I'm a champion. I win always. I'm a winner. Come on, say it. I'm a winner. I win always. I win every day. The Bible says that they that receive abundance of grace, and of the gift of righteousness they shall reign so i'm a champion forever no matter what comes my way i beat you down i win you can't stand before me and and win me is impossible i'm a champion forever hallelujah last month was a month of favor how many of you experienced favor you experienced the spirit of favor now, some of you, you're not lifting up your hands because maybe you didn't, you didn't see money in your pocket. How many of you, you were favored by God? You see, when God looked at Mary and said, Thou art highly favored. Hi. There was no money in her pocket. She received something more than money. She received the gift of the Spirit, perfect in her spirit. You see, to receive certain spiritual gifts is favor. It means that God has counted you worthy to receive this gift. So he gives you favor. He said, I've seen God's favor in my life. I'm favored. I'm so favored. And God now spoke to It was in February itself that God told me about the month of March. And the month of March is a very beautiful month. We have marched into March. And we are going to be marching in March. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you what the Lord says is, the, is going to happen to you in the month of March. It's in Joshua chapter number 3. Our God is champion. Hi! God is raising champions. Champions like me. I'm a champion for God. Hi! God raised David. Listen, when God raises you, you become a champion. Joshua chapter 3. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua. Can you put your name there? And the Lord said unto Claude. Hey, Yada. This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. That they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And the Lord said, tell them that this month is the month of exposure and influence. What does it mean is your month of exposure? It means God is going to start exposing you. When I say expose there, it's not negative. It's that the things that you do in secret that nobody sees that nobody pays you for. God is going to put, he's going to shine his light on it and you'll become magnified. It means the grace of God is going to rest on you. For example, Didwell is a good artist. Not many people know him. He can look at you and draw you 
and draw you, you, you yourself, what he drew will look much more real than you standing there. He can draw, but nobody knows him. But the Lord said this month is a month of exposure. It means that God is going to take his drawings and put it on mountain tops that everybody will see him. He said it is a month of exposure and influence. It means after the exposure not come, another spirit will not rest on you. It's called the spirit of influence. It will give you an edge over everybody else. It means when they are looking for, a, for, for, for an artist, everybody's name, everybody's, your name is in everybody's lips. Did well, did well, did well, did well, did well. Exposure. And you know what the Lord told me about this month of exposure? He said, it will be the things that you least expected. Maybe you are a powerful artist. And God will now come and take a skill that you have, that you don't even use, that, that you think is just rubbish. Maybe you're a powerful artist. You've, you've, you've harnessed all your energy in drawing. And all of a sudden, God just wakes up and takes painting that you have no plan for. And you start painting. And somebody just sees it. And says, I like this. And calls you. You paint there. Another person sees it. I like it. Your name just starts going like that. And you say, no, this is not my real. I just do this for fun. It's not the real one. But it's what God chooses. The thing that you, you don't even give consideration to. God is going to magnify it. He told Joshua, this year, this day, I will begin to magnify you before all Israel. And it is a word for you. God is saying, I should tell you, he is going to start magnifying you. Making you known. You see, popularity is very important. If you are not popular, you won't go far. The Bible said that Jesus, he grew in fame. Fame is important. Shalom, who, who did this hair for you? Shalom, she did her hair for herself. But she is a medical doctor. And she has been this all her life, going to school, and then God just caused this one big artist to just say, oh, where did you play this hair? Say, I did it for myself. A big artist, can you come and do it for me? And the artist pays her one million dollars. One, one million dollars is for it. Something medical school will never pay her for. And before you know it, another artist sees it in, the, in that hair of in that artist. Oh, who did this? Shalom. Shalom. A medical student. Now, artists all over the world are calling her. What has happened to her medical career? <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. I just do this for fun. This is not what I have. This is not my life plan. That's what is going to happen to you. He is going to magnify you. Well, are you saying, how about our careers? How about the thing that we want to do? No, I'm not saying that God will not touch that. I'm just trying to let you know that he uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And God is going to give you mighty influence this year. From this month, your influence will begin to grow. If you don't have influence, you can, be, you can make impact. And God is going to increase influence in your life. You see, some people are product of other, influ of other influential people. They like certain things because somebody else likes it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And God wants you to be the one that will set the pace. So he's going to give you mighty influence this month. People will start going to church because of you. People will start loving God because of you. Hallelujah. That's what God is going to do in this month. So he said that this month is a month of exposure. You that have been hiding that gift is going to bring it out. God is going to dig deep into you and bring out things and light you up before the world. You will become like a city set on a hill because God is going to do it for you this year. But give yourself time with the Holy Spirit. Could you just pray in tongues right now? Hand on Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray 
I find space for one. Pray in tongues. Just keep praying. Keep praying. I find space for work. I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities. Jesus, you're my number one. I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities and Jesus, you're my number one. So I will make room for you. I will prepare for two so you I will make room for you. I will prepare for two. So you tell that you can't leave me, Lord. Lord, leave in me. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You know, there have been an obsession in my heart. There have been a current obsession in my heart. And I pray that becomes your obsession. I pray it becomes your obsession. I will Make room for you. I will prepare for two. So you don't feel that you cannot live here, oh God. You see, uh, and I'm trying hard. To communicate this. Oh Lord help me. Let me put it this way. The greatest sin. Of our generation. Is that we have rejected the Holy Ghost. We have not made room for him. You see. Religion is one ultimate thing that have dominated the world and have entered into the church and have become the principal the principality of the church religion the parable of the ten virgins Matthew 25 you see you cannot have access into God without the Holy Spirit. You can't have access. Let me show you something. Before you go to that Matthew 25, 1 Corinthians. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians. Blessed be God. Chapter 2. Verse 6. How bit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. In a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. 
Even the, I want you to see that word, the hidden wisdom. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. It's called the hidden wisdom. It's a hidden wisdom. You see, God hides it. The Bible says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing and the honor of kings to search out the matter. You have no access into the mysteries of God. The kingdom of God is a, is a mystery. The Bible says that um, this, uh, this is the mystery which was hidden in ages past. But now is made manifest. You see, the kingdom has to be made manifest unto you. Until it is made manifest, you have no access into it. And it's only the Holy Spirit that makes it manifest unto you. He's called the spirit of wisdom and revelation into the mysteries of God. Albert, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, not the princes of this world, no. That come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Even the, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes know. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered, have entered into the heart of man. The things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Go to Matthew 25. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Matthew 25. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. We took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Last week, we already established that the lamp stands for the word of God. Because the Bible says that word is a lamp. They took what? Lamps. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil and their vessels with them. Sorry, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. This is where we are. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Last week we established that they all all of them we are what virgins, right? It means they were all Christians. They were all born again. And they all had lamps. See, the lamps stand for the word of God. You see, if you're not born again, you can you don't have you can have a lamp. Praise the Lord. Meaning they were all born again, they were all Christians. But the Bible says five we have. Um, are wise and five we are foolish and last week we were able to 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 find out what made the five wise and what made the other five foolish and we said it was a demarcation the spirit and this has been a burden in my heart because this is where the church is in this in this in these last days We all have access to the lamp. But the fire has run out. And, I, and we established something. If you, read, if you read at the latter part of that, of that parable, the Bible says that when they all slept, then the bridegroom came. And who were those that were able to go with him? The wise ones. Were those that had lamp. That had oil in their lamp. And those that had no oil in their lamp. 
the Bible says they were rejected. And that is one thing that is something that if you tell many believers today, they might argue with you and even fight you. A person that has lost touch with the ministry of the Spirit. When you've lost touch with the ministry of the Spirit, you have lost access into the kingdom. Your access into the kingdom is the Holy Ghost. Listen, the Bible says, listen, the church is led by the Spirit. In fact, God even qualifies sons as those who are led by the Spirit. Because it takes, it takes the Holy Ghost to, to make you a son. And the Holy Ghost, you see, the ministry of the Spirit is beyond speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues and be out. Now, what I'm, what I'm really trying to communicate here is not just the dynamics of the Spirit. I'm talking about the person of the Holy Ghost. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is a person? First of all, let's establish this. The Holy Spirit, he is a person. He is the third person of the Godhead. He's the one that has been sent to walk with us. He's the one that has been sent to glorify Jesus in our lives and through our lives. But you see, he's very sensitive. That's why the Bible says that we should not be we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. In fact, I thereby say this, you cannot be a Christian until you have received the Holy Spirit. You are not a Christian. What makes you a Christian is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When were the disciples, when did the disciples become born again? It was not when they were working with Jesus. They were not yet born again. Peter was not born again when he was working with Jesus. It was in that place when God told them to go and wait. And the Bible says they were baptized with the Spirit. That's when they had access into the kingdom of God. Because to be born again, in John chapter 3, Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. So it takes these two ministries for you to be born again. So many people have the lamp. They have the lamp. They go to church. They have the lamp. They know all the scriptures. They have the lamp with them. But in their lamp, there's no oil. No spirit. All about the world. There are so many people who proclaim the name Christians. They are Christians. In fact, I don't even like calling myself a Christian. Because that is not who Jesus called us. That's not what the Bible calls us. The word of God does not call us Christians. We are not Christians. The word, that word Christians came from the mouth of, an un, of unbelievers. They were the one in Antioch that looked at the disciples and called them Christians. They are not called Christians. We are not called Christians. We are called saints. We are the saints of God. So what gives you access into the, in, into the kingdom is the spirit. The Bible says we are sealed. And how does Apostle say? He's the what? Yes. There's a way you, you actually say it. Now he's the what? He's the mark of ownership. The Holy Spirit is the mark of ownership. It means that God looks at, God identifies that he owns you by the Holy Ghost. God identifies that you belong to him. By the Holy Spirit. So when you don't have the Holy Ghost living in you, it's a sign that you are not yet possessed by God. Even though you have access to the Word. Even though you have the Bible with you, you understand all. In fact, you can't even understand the Scriptures without the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Jesus, he breathed on them and they understood the Scriptures. That's why some of you, you, op you read your Bible, you open the Bible to read and you have no access. The Bible has become the most boring thing in your life. Somebody said, me, I just enjoy worship. 
It's because they have no access. They can quote John 3.16. I tell people I can preach for three years. John 3.16. For three years. Three good years. Solid years. Just John 3.16. Because as I look at it, I begin to see deeper. I begin to see more. Because not only do I have the ministry of the lamp, I also have the oil. The oil is what, is what turns on the lamp. But do you know the oil can run out? So that is what happened to the foolish virgins. They all started out having lamps and having oil. But the Bible says the oil of the foolish virgins ran out. Hey, and that is the problem today. The oil of so many people have run out and have denied them access again. You hear people that are telling you, I used to prophesy before, what happened to now? The oil have run out. And listen, the Bible says when the bridegroom came, he only came for those that still had the oil. Meaning when you are here, there's no oil. You are rejected by God. God rejects you for lacking oil. The fact that we, are, that we are called foolish by God was because they had cut connection with the ministry of the Spirit. There was no more oil in their life. And what happens to that? Listen, it is a dangerous thing to even study the Word of God without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because it is possible for Satan to even use the ministry of the world to destroy your life. There are so many people in these last days that have come up with all manner of doctrines out of the world. They hold the, listen, the devil can use this Bible to destroy you. We have built cultures, monuments, systems in the house of God out of the world that had no light. Praise the Lord. Kabbalah has so many days. They were rejected because they had no oil. I want to ask you, where's your oil level? Is there still oil in your lamp? Is there still oil in your lamp? Do you know that God will reject you? Listen, speaking in tongues is not proof that you have oil. In fact, even prophesying is not proof that you have oil. What am I really talking about? What am I really trying to draw your attention to? is to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Into a walk with God. How do you walk with God? Through the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that breathes upon your mind and opens up your understanding and you begin to understand the word of God. He guides you unto all truth. Jesus said, I am the true light that shines. Means there are other lights. But if the Holy Ghost shows you the true light. I was in shock when I heard about the doctrine of, other, of certain Christians. I was in shock. In fact, when I opened some, some churches, their doctrines, I'm like, what is happening? Do you know how Islam came about? Do you know that if you open the Quran and begin to read, you will see scriptures there. You will see things that are identical with your Bible. The Torah, you will see the laws of Moses written there correctly. But what spirit is driving it? What spirit is driving that belief? They have the lamp, but they have no oil. It means Satan even has access to lamp. 
you read at the mountain where he, where he came to Jesus and he gave Jesus the, the lamp. He quoted scriptures to Jesus. But Jesus, by the Spirit, he was able to know. And he rebuked him. This is one ministry that we have so much not really given him to because I think the church, many young people are not yet taught on how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Listen, there's a difference between the abilities that the Holy Ghost gives you and the person of the Holy Spirit himself. So at times, you can find us, you can shift from the person of the Holy Spirit and still find yourself operating in the gift of the Spirit and still be deceived that you still have the Holy Ghost working with you. You see, this is, you see, this last, this young, we have really despised the Holy Ghost because we don't know what he can do. And God is calling you. You see, to walk with the Holy Spirit, you can't walk with him when your flesh is still alive. You can't walk, you see, you don't walk with the Holy Spirit in the realm of the flesh. For you to access the ministry of the Spirit, the first thing that you need to deal with is that the flesh has to grow away. And that is what the Holy Ghost does. When, he, when he's active in your life, the flesh will automatically give way. Because him and the flesh, they don't see eye to eye. You see, our, our ministry, Awake Ministry, it's a call to bring young people into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Into the fellowship, the oneness of the Holy Spirit. Into the oneness of the Spirit. When God called, when, when God called me, he gave me Joel 2. 28. He said, in these last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It means I will distribute my Holy Ghost. I will give out my spirit to this generation. So God told me, you are to raise a spirit-filled generation. A generation of young people who are full of the Holy Ghost. Who are walking in the spirit and they are walking with the spirit. So our assignment as a ministry, our calling as a ministry, is to raise a generation of people who recognizes the ministry of the Holy Ghost and have surrendered themselves to that ministry. That God will walk in them and through them. But you see, and that's why in our ministry we have various arms through which we project that calling. See, we are seated in we are, you see, we are straight in four dimensions, in four groups. Just so that I'll, I'll be able to, 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 to let you know why you are here. You see, this is TFH, right? TFH came from, from a program that the, that the Lord gave us. It's called Touch from Heaven. Now, the assignment of the Touch from Heaven is is a crusade that God gave us to be doing for him to carry the atmosphere of heaven into cities, into towns, into places to carry the atmosphere of heaven into people's homes into towns, into villages see people cannot know God until we go and you cannot go until the Holy Spirit draws you So we are the ones that have been called to carry the atmosphere of God. To carry the spirit. To carry the assignment of Joel 28 into homes. Into, into, into nations. So this arm in this ministry, that's their call. It's an evangelical arm. And if you are here, you have an evangelical ministry. This is the people that you should, you should actually meet. Because this year, we have a project. Our project this is that 
we want to touch at least, we want to see to, to it that at least 1,000 young people have been impacted by Joel 2.28. That before, that as we are right now uh, December this year, that we are living this year with 1,000 people speaking in tongues, receiving the baptism of the, of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to do it through TFH. And this is AGT. Now, most of these things, they came as a result of a program that God gave us to do for him, where, which, which now turned out to become ministries. Now, AGT awakes God talent. Through this arm, the Lord told us that, you see, in these last days, the devil is going to use creativity, talents. And that is one gate that the devil has really gotten a hold of, the gate of entertainment. You see, that gate has robbed even the church. Through the gate of entertainment, you see Christians that, that have singing ministries. They will leave the church and, and they, will be, they will be driven out of the church into a worldly platform. But this arm has a unique calling. These are people, their assignment is to pray and to reach out through talent and also to reach out to the talented world. They reach out to the entertainment world and bring them in. Get them filled with the Holy Ghost and send them out as ministers of God. So in this generation, we are going to have rappers who are full of the Holy Ghost. We are going to have dancers when they dance, there, there, is, a, there is an atmosphere of God. We are going to have singers, artists, that will, be, that will be discipled through this arm. So the assignment of this arm is to bring in the, is to, is to bring in those people and raise them. And this is the CRO. The Church Richard Arm. One place where, you see, the, the church have turned so cold. During our half night, we asked a question. On Monday, leaders meeting, we were here. I asked the leaders a question. I said, which church can you tell me? We started, we started asking. Which church in Gambia that have, which church in Gambia has a youth leader that's on fire? That you can see the endowment of the spirit in that youth leader. Which church in Gambia you go to their youth, to their youth ministry, their youth department, you see they are so much on fire. You go there, they minister to you prophetically. You go there, you see, you just see fire. Where are young people that are on fire in the church? You go to Sunday school. Or you go to the youth department on Sundays. Is where you find the nastiest people. Covered by faith. Young people in the church are dead. But CRO, the church of Richard's arm, our assignment is to go into churches and take this fire into the churches to lighten the lamps again. And this arm, the ETC, our assignment is to reach out to, to students in schools. We, we already have a conference coming up on Friday, this Friday. We have, how many schools have we, have we reached out to? Approximately. About, we've gone to about 15 schools. We are bringing those students here to set them on fire and release them to go and start fellowships in their schools that will grow. That's the assignment. And that is the calling of God in these last days. So if you are in this ministry, you are part of an assignment. And, but are you relevant in that assignment? You see, many people want to be relevant. Listen, the reason why you came is because you want to be relevant to God. There's nobody who is here that, who is here that does not want to be relevant in the kingdom of God. There's nobody here right now who is here that does not want to be used by God. Is there anybody who does not want to be used by God? Is there anybody who doesn't want, I don't want God to use me. Of course, I've, I've met people like that. They say, me, I just want to be a backbencher. I want to sit down at the back and observe quietly. You know, I'm a very private person. 
When you receive the Holy Ghost, you cannot be private. He makes you a city set on a lamp. That mentality is a devilish mentality. If you have that mentality, you, you are, you are, you are positive. It means your lamp has been put out. Light shines. You cannot hide light. So if you have that mentality, me, I don't like, I just like to just come in quietly and live quietly. You are carrying a, a demonic atmosphere. The Holy Ghost, he's very obvious. He's very, he's not talking, but you can hear him. You can't deny him. When he shows forth, you, you, you just know. But you see, the ultimate reason why most of us cannot really access the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We want to be relevant, but we don't know how to. You see, the only reason why you can be relevant in the house of God is to embrace one thing that we all don't like. You see, if you are too attached to the world, God can't use you. The Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. We are too attached to the world. The world is our friend. You can't have the world being your friend and God being your friend. We are looking for a... Listen, my heart cry these days has been, Oh God, raise a generation of prophetic people. You enter the fellowship before you even sit down. A sister quietly sends you a note. A prophetic word. You open it and you're on fire. Let me ask you, when last did you prophesy to somebody? When last did you have a word for somebody? Where is the ministry of the Spirit in your life? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, you are neither hot nor cold. I will spew you out of my mouth. One thing that God rejects is a Christian that has no fire in his life. The Bible says, if you read uh, John 15, it says that the brand that, 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 that does not bear fruit, that is dry, he will cast it away. Dry. Dryness. Dryness, you see, demons, they love dry places. When your life is dry, you become a habitation for demonic dwellings. A Christian can have demons living with him. Because your life is dry. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. If you want to be on fire for God, you have to pay a price. A price of living. There's a life that comes with glory. You won't access God just like that. You won't access glory just like that. There are things you do. When last did you speak to somebody? When last did you pray for somebody and they got healed? When last were you an effective tool in the hand of God? When last? When last, uh, last week I asked, when last did you even groan in the spirit? Tell your, tell your neighbor, disconnect. Oh, yes. If you read Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, the Bible says, and Jacob was left alone. Listen, walking with God is a very lonely street. That's why many people don't like it. Walking with the Holy Spirit is a very lonely road. The road is a lonely one. You cannot be eating bread every day and have the power of God working in your life. You can't be with friends every day. You can't be with people every day. The ministry of the Spirit, it takes you out. It takes you out of everybody. Look at Jesus. The Bible says that there are so many times that he will leave his disciples and go alone to go and pray. He will cut his activities to go back home and pray. How many of you do that? You cut to go back home and pray. You cut something. Oh, 
so they have to cut it, have to go back and pray. How many of you, how many of you have appointments with God? Do you have divine appointments? You want to be relevant in the kingdom of God. Do you have appointment with God? Do you have time with God? Do you have prayer times? If you read Genesis 32, 24 about Jacob, he was in a very tense situation, a very tense one, where his life was, was, was at stake. His brother Esau was looking for him to kill him. And in the midst of that trouble, this guy wanted to seek God. He was joining with his family, with his wife, with everybody. But the Bible says in verse 24 that Jacob, he sent everybody away. He sent, listen, there are more missing. God will not come until some things leave. There are certain things of the spirit that will not rest in your life until other things make way. Jacob, he intentionally sent away his family. Sent away his wife, sent away his servant, pushed everybody aside. And the Bible says he was left alone, waiting for God. If you want to know the ministry of the Spirit, you have to embrace waiting on God. What does it mean to wait on, on, on God? It means to put everything aside, put off your phone, put off the TV, put off even, put off everything. And you are just there waiting on God in prayer. You could be worshipping. You could be just praying in tongues, but you are waiting on God. It's one thing this generation have no time for. Because this world calls for attention. Our problem is we are drawn by so many things. So many things have taken our attention. And to, and to have anointing, you need to pay the price of attention. He said, my son, give attention to my words. Give attention. You have to give it. Give attention to prayer. Give attention to the ministry of the Spirit. Give attention to the Word. How many of you, you have messages on your phone? You put on earpiece and all the way through, you are listening to a, to a sermon. Some of you, if, you are, if, if God is to put a weight balance on your phone, and to balance the music that are of the spirit, those that, that are of the flesh outweighs that, that, those that are of the spirit. And you want to walk in the power of God? Jacob was left alone. And the Bible says, when he was left alone, then a man came and wrestled with him. When you are left alone, you begin to have encounters. Some of you, the reason why you've never had any encounter is because you've never been left alone. To be, you see, to be left alone is not about, at times you can take everybody out, but still you are not alone. It's a place of emptying yourself. Ripping yourself off your mind. You're just left alone. There's something, Natalia Basi always says, how do you say it? Spending more time with God means wasting less time in life. When you spend more time with God, it might look as though you are losing. That's one thing I want to train even those that are in exam, those that are students here. As you say you have exam tomorrow, so by that you're not coming to fellowship. No, don't adopt that habit. Even if you have exam tomorrow, come into the house of God, receive grace and go. Don't esteem your exam above God. When it's time to be in the house of God, come. Come. Don't cut out God. Give God that room, that place. That come what may, it is you. When Jacob was left alone with God, then, a, then God, a man came and wrestled with him. And what did the man do? He broke him. You see, the first thing that God will do before he gives you glory, he has, to, he has to break you. Because you are too strong. God does, not deal, God does not like using strong people. He does not like using strong people. People who are strong. People who know well, who know too much. 
The reason why God can't use you is because you are too strong. The day you become weak and say, God, only you. Paul said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Jacob, God had to break him. Until the man was limping. When he was not limping, means, meaning all his abilities were broken. He could not submit to God. And then what happened? Then God, in the place of brokenness, that's when God was able to reveal unto you his true identity. Until you are broken, God will reveal, God will reveal unto you your true identity. And God told him his real name. But you see, all these things happen in the place of waiting on God. Embrace waiting on God. Embrace it. You won't lose that time. Go back and wait on God. Go back on your knees. When I go on YouTube, I download messages. When you come to my house, in the parlor, a message is playing. In the bedroom, a song is playing. Everywhere I enter. In fact, I learned that from, from a man of God. Before I even learned that from him, I've, I've, been, I've been doing that. Until I also heard a man of God say that he also does that. I was like, wow. Everywhere, the word of God is split in the house everywhere. The atmosphere now is always charged. I'm going out, there's a message playing in my ears. Because at the time you enter taxi, not that you are listening to the song that the driver is playing. You're not even listening. After an hour later, you find yourself singing the song. It has registered in your spirit. Your spirit has picked up a pollution. And God, that thing alone can resist God from moving. I don't want nothing to resist him. You see, I don't understand Christians that say, you know, it's not bad. Listen, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with listening to, to certain kind of music. But you cannot have the spirit and that music. Listen, listen walking, with, walking in power, it calls for total consecration. One commandment that God gave the Levites was that a Levite should not touch anything that is dead. When, they, when a Levite touch anything that is dead, they become defiled. But today, we Levites, we touch every dead thing. Every dead conversation, we are touching it. Every song that is dead, we are touching it. Any song that, that, that does not have life in it, I can't touch it. And I don't want to put it in my mouth. Because this man, it ministers only life. I'm a life-giving spirit. I don't bring out anything that is dead. For you, it's okay. You can sing any song you want. It's okay. You become blunt. Not every relationship, not every friendship I have. You want to walk in power. Embrace walking alone. All those that walked in greatness, they walked alone. Because listen, God cannot do anything in your life beyond the power that you have accessed. In Ephesians chapter 3, it says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think, according to the power that works in you. Meaning, the only power that God will use to work in your life is the one that you have access to. For example, if maybe cancer touches you, and the level of power that you have access in God is not strong enough to destroy cancer. When you are praying for God to heal you, he can only walk in the perimeter of the power that you have accessed. Oh, I don't know if anybody's... I don't know if you understood that. God works in your life in the basis of the amount of power in him that you are able to access. If you read Ezekiel chapter 47... If you read Ezekiel 47, the Bible says that this angel journeyed with this man 
as they were journeying, he, he took a thousand cubits, a thousand miles. He says, the waters were to the ankle. Some of us, that's where we stopped. We have stopped with God with the glory being in the ankle level. There are certain things you cannot drown at ankle level. That's why when God comes to walk, he only walks based on the power that you have walked in you. So if your level is ankle level, God can only walk within the perimeter. So if you are asking him for a miracle that is above that level, he has to take you to somebody who has, who has, who has that access. And that is the problem in Gambia. We don't even have men that have that have the access, the water that have risen up to a certain dimension that can drown certain demons, certain sicknesses. But funnily, in the world, there are marabouts that have glory that have risen up. I've seen marabouts that do mighty things that, than pastors. That's why in Gambia, people don't go to pastors, they go to marabouts. Because marabouts have consecrated themselves and their powers have risen. But us, the church, we only know the only time a pastor wants to preach, a, a pastor has intimacy with his Bible is on Saturday because he's coming to preach. The only time you see a chorus that giving time is because he has to sing. How about if you had no pulpit to preach? What will happen to you? How about if you had no place to minister? Listen, the Bible says they ministered unto the Lord. Our first ministry is to minister unto the Lord. So if you have no program coming up, there's no preparation. You see somebody studying intensely, reading the Bible fasting now because of a program. But when there's no program, he's relaxed. May God give you hunger to see things. I am tired of seeing the church in Gambia. You see people, you, you even see some people they come to church. After service, they are going for, other, so, for, an, for another solution. The medical doctors are richer than, than pastors. Do you know why? Because pastors are not solving problems. The doctors are solving problems. No pastor is praying for somebody to get healed and they are getting healed. But they are sure of doctors. So don't blame the doctors. They are doing their job well. They are studying seven years. Go and see the life of a doctor. Go and, go and look at the life of a medical student. And go and look at the life of a, of a preacher. A medical student, give themselves time to, their, to what they are doing. While a preacher is out there, <laughs> befriending everybody, going everywhere. You are a priest unto God. You spend more time outside than you spend more time inside. There are different kind of prophets. If you read in, I think, in, I think it's in 1 Kings 22. Is it Zedekiah? Is it Zedekiah? What's the name of that prophet that smote? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it Zedekiah? Is it, is it Zedekiah? Micaiah was loved. I think it's Zedekiah. The king of Israel was about to go into battle. And he brought in, he invited another king to go into battle with him. And the king of, is it the king of Israel? He asked him, he said, inquire of the prophets. And the king went and called all his prophets. And the Bible says, the prophets, they began to prophesy. They prophesied, good. He said, the, king, the king can go for battle all is well. Then, King Jehoshaphat said to him, he said, please, is there any other prophet beside these ones? He said, yes, there's another prophet. His name is Micaiah. That, they had to call him Micaiah. No, when I saw that thing, I was moved. They had to call, they had to go and call Micaiah. It means Micaiah was not always seen with the prophet. He was always alone with God. No one of God, God could talk to him. Those other prophets, even though they were prophets, genuine prophets, but because of lack of always, because of lack of consecration, they were open to a lying spirit. They had to go and call Micaiah and bring him. And he spoke the word of God. 
And Zedekiah came to him and slapped him and said, Where went the Holy Ghost from me unto you? But what touched me is the fact that they had to go and call him. Hey! It was time to minister to the king. You know, some people, they love ministering to the king. He loved to minister unto God. He was locked up in the secret place. They had to go and call him from the secret place. These other prophets, they were always there before the king, before the congregation, before men. But this guy, he stood before God. When you hide before God, they will come and call you. It may look as though you are not relevant. But when the time comes, exposure, they will bring you out. And you will have influence over every other person. Why? Because you are coming from God. You are a man of God. This last, this generation, we need men of God. A man of God. A child of God. Ye are of God. Hallelujah. May God give us grace. God is calling you. He's called you to a place of waiting on Him. He's calling you. Can you just bow your head and say, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly according to the power. Brother, where is the power of God in your life? Where is it? The first dimension when this guy walked with God, the Bible said the water rose to the ankle. Is it called 47? Bible says, as he measured another thousand cubits, the water rose to the knees. As he measured an another thousand, it rose to the loins. And when he measured the fourth dimension, he said, it was a river that I could not cross over. The glory was everywhere. That's the kind of glory we are looking for in Gambia. A river that covers everything. And the Bible says this river, it went to the waters and the waters were healed. Hey! Can you just speak, speak in tongues? Pray in the Holy Ghost. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you. We wait on you, oh Lord. We wait on you. Your strength in God is in the place of waiting. We wait on you. That's where He renews your anointing, Lord. We wait. On you, oh God, we wait on you, oh Lord, we wait, we wait on you. I want to pray for you. If you're here, you know that God has called you into the prophetic, just stand up. If I prayed for you on Monday as a leader, don't stand up. If you're here on Monday, don't stand up. But those of you, you who are here, you are called into a prophetic grace. You know that, that God has called you into visions. You see through dreams. You hear. Just rise wherever you are. Lord, we wait on you. The prophetic grace is in your life. We wait on you. Oh Lord, we wait. Come and stand in front of me. We wait on you. Come and stand here. We wait on you. Oh. Lord, we wait on you. Oh God. Kalabashan. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you, Lord. Oh God. Thank you, 
Holy Spirit. There's grace here already. There's grace here. There's grace in this building. Listen, look at me. As I pray for you, God will open your eyes. There's only one of you already feeling, you're feeling like heat sensation in your eye. There's only like heat sensation. If you're here, you're feeling that, you're feeling your eyes are getting dizzy. Like a heat sensation in your eye. You just come out. It is you. There's a prophetic grace hitting you. There's a prophetic grace hitting you. Maybe you didn't even step up, but you could just feel energy around your eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ask does the Lord activate my prophetic gift. Activate my prophetic gift. Say, Lord, activate my prophetic gift. Those of you seated down, whatever gift you have, just say, Lord, activate my gifts. Activate my gifts. Activate my gift to God. Activate my gift. If you can speak in tongues, just speak in tongues. Activate my gift to God. Shaka balade. Iba sovre sabalades. Malabra so shadi la bahaya. Lord, activate them. Activate. Everybody just stand up. Everybody stand up. Just tell the Lord, active my gifts. I said, pray for you. You start seeing right now. You start seeing. There's grace there. You start seeing. Activate them, oh God. You will start seeing. Your imagination is charged with the power of God. Ibala sovre samagades. Evra so de magragades. Evra so de magragades. Evra so de magragades. Ibala sombra bashe de lebres. Just begin to pray things right now. Just pray things right now. Pray things right now. La basa bragades. Activate gifts, O God. We wait on you. Activate gifts right now, O God. Yes. It's activated. That is it. It's activated. It's activated. You will see. You will see. It's activated. You will see. Oh, it's activated. You will see. It's activated. You will see it. There is an activation of gifts in this room. God is active. I'm seeing that the Spirit of God is moving here. He's activating gifts all over this room. I'm seeing oil pouring in this room. I'm seeing oil like oil is pouring here. There's oil pouring in this room. There's oil pouring. There's oil. There's oil. There are gifts pouring. There are oil. There's oil. There's oil. There's oil. There are gifts pouring. God is betting new things. He's betting new things. He's betting. There's oil. There's oil. There's oil. Dear saints of God, we believe this message has been a blessing to your soul. Please to share your testimony with us. Contact us on plus two two zero three one nine nine three three zero or three zero six four. 155 or 3321694. You can also send us an email at arcofchange1 at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook at Arc of Change. Arc of Change Ministry, changing lives, transforming nations. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Feel this temple your presence Holy Spirit you are welcome feel this temple with your presence we wait on you Lord we wait on you 
we wait on you Lord, we wait on you We wait on you Lord, we wait on you Lord, we wait on you Lord, we wait Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yeah. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, oh, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, oh, we wait on you, Lord, we wait. Thank <laughs> you. 